So welcome, in today's episode, this is gonna be part one here where we're installing our above ground pool. Now the reason I'm gonna split this up in two parts, we have a lot of work to do that's gonna go over many days. For starters, we already know we want a deck coming off this concrete porch, and there's a significant slope here, three plus feet, that's gonna go out to where the pool is. So in this first part right here, we're gonna to have to pull some strings, get the layout of where the pool's gonna be, also in relation to the height of where we want the finished deck to be up here where it meets the porch. So we have quite a bit of leveling and lasering to do, plus some string pulling in order to make sure we have the pool to go exactly where it's supposed to be. Then we're gonna excavate out the ground, backfill it with some dirt that had hauled in, some nice clean fill, nothing that will potentially damage the liner itself. So I do wanna preface all this by saying this is my first pool ever. However, I do have friends in the pool business and some people that have experience putting them up. So I'm going off of a lot of information from their experience. Experience. We are putting in a 27 foot above ground pool. We know how far off the porch we want it to go this way. And as you can see, we have a post frame home. So there's two posts over here that are perfectly squared with the house that I'm gonna pull a string off of. These posts over here are exactly 30 feet away and I wanna pull a string off of them. So whenever you excavate out, if you're gonna bury your above ground pool, by the way, make sure you have one that allows that, not all will allow to be buried partially or if you're gonna build a pad on top of the ground, which is gonna be a quicker and easier process than what we're doing today. Again, we just wanna make sure the pool's a specific height out there in the yard, so it's nice and flush with the deck that we're gonna build off out there too. We just don't want the pole sticking way up in the air out there above the deck or below the deck. It's just not a look we're going for. But whenever you do your pad or excavate out for the pool, you always wanna go about a foot, foot and a half wider than the pool itself. So it just so happens these posts are spaced 30 feet apart, so we're gonna pull strings 30 feet out there for a 27 foot pull, excavate out a 30 foot area. That gives us plenty of wiggle room and working room to kind of fill back in later. Trust me, don't try to get your hole exact. It's not gonna work out well for you. So I'm gonna put a couple nails in these posts that I can hook a string to and pull and square off of these posts. It'll make sense here in a second. Also, you're gonna see, even though we're putting a round pool in, I'm about to go out there and square off an area. It is much easier to excavate out a square when I'm backfilling with a tractor, doing some scraping, instead of trying to match up to a perfect circle. A square is easier to work with, even though you're gonna excavate out a little more ground. All right, now that I have that nail in, I can put a loop on some mason's twine, come around this post, and now you can see what I'm doing. I can run this rope all out in the yard and I can pull it over to when I barely touch this post that I know is perfectly in line with the next one. Now I have me a rough string pull out there and I'm roughly squared off. We'll do some final measurement to see. All right, so let me show you what we're doing here. The digging has started. So you can see we're having to find level down here because the yard slopes this direction and back this direction. It's got a couple slopes to it. And we're doing that with this machine right here. So we have a laser set up all the way over there in the yard. And what we do is we go up to the porch where I have some two by fours set up right here, which is gonna be the top of my deck that comes out to the pool. And we set the laser right there. We just found a mark on this pole that matched up with where the laser's shooting over here. Then we set how high we want to pull out of the ground. I have a pull upright over there. So let me show you this. So this is one of the pool support posts and I know that goes on the bottom and the pool cap goes up in here. I want my deck to stop somewhere underneath this pool cap. I think it just looks better because there's a large cap that goes up top. And we measured that, that was 51 inches. So the little 10 inch mark that we had just randomly set on the post, finding level from the laser out there to the top of where the deck's gonna go out, we had to add 51 inches. So we came up from that mark all the way up 51 inches to here. And that's how we're setting level everywhere out there, which we're actually digging past it a, a little by a couple inches because we're gonna backfill with this nice loose sand but we're finding that my sand here is beautiful topsoil. I have clay on this property, but everything we're digging up right now is just wonderful looking topsoil. There's a little bit of clay starts down here. You can see the color changing. That's not the world's best, but this right here looks really, really good. 
and he's doing an awesome job too he's taking his time no point in rushing he's scraping the grass off and putting it in clumps and then he's separating out this really good topsoil that we can maybe backfill with if we don't have enough of that sand and i can go save this on the property because it's really good rich soil and use it for other things and then all this nasty grass and all that we don't want i'll go store it in a pile somewhere and let it rot down over a few years it'll break down and it'll get rid of the grass that's in it and then eventually i'll have soil there so that's the way this process is going you can see this is one of the deepest corners we had to dig down that's actually going to be the deepest corner because the property's sloping this way we're only going to have to dig down about what you see over there four inches back up here is close to 18 inches that over there will probably be about that deep as well trying to take his time and only get like the top four inches of grass and roots to save me all that good dirt So seven hours later, I kid y'all not, and that's with an experienced excavator operator and an excavator over here. That's how long it took to get to the point that you're seeing now. So the majority of the day, it was just the excavator operator and me running around with his little receiver from the laser, getting him close. We dug out two plus inches deeper than we needed to, and then we backfilled with this nice sand right here. And I ordered in a clean fill sand from a local quarry, sand quarry, and explain to them, hey, this is going underneath a pool liner. I need the cleanest sand you can bring me. They said, absolutely no problem. We know what you need. And this type of sand packs out really, really well. So we backfilled about two inches. We thought we were gonna have more sand than we did. We were originally talking about backfilling about four inches, but the two inches is good because it turns out we thought we were gonna hit a lot of clay here like we have elsewhere on the property. We hit really good sandy, loamy type soil that we actually could have used uh, you know underneath the pool liner itself, but the sand is just gonna make it that much better So backfill two inches. We have everything within one half of an inch of level We set the level we knew where we wanted the top of the pool to be based on where the decks gonna come out I explained that earlier. We actually filled this about an inch and a half higher than where I plan on being and I've left myself some buffer with the deck and pull if the pulls a little higher than the deck No big deal. That doesn't matter the reason we left this, we've made this pad about an inch and a half higher is because it's gonna pack and settle out about that much. So I ran the sprinkler all night long and it made a heck of a difference. I can tell the ground has settled quite a bit because now my feet don't sink in nearly as much when I'm out here walking today. But it's still spongy enough that it needs some kind of extra compaction. So I'm using a manual hand tamper. I'm actually going along and tamping the ground and you can literally feel it settle out underneath your feet. And I'm getting it down probably about another half an inch. Now on something this size, I recommend going and renting one of those plate compactors. You see them on job sites everywhere. It's got a small gas engine. People go around behind it and it's got a vibrating plate that runs across the ground and it packs ground like this out very, very well. Problem is I haven't been able to find one here locally without driving a long ways off to a big city. So I just decided to run the sprinkler, do some hand tamping. It's a lot of extra manual labor, 
but it is free and it saves me all that drive time. As I'm going through here tamping as well, I'm pulling out any little bit of grass that I find, any little rocks, trash, debris, anything that I don't want potentially impact my liner, even though we're gonna put down a pad underneath to take care of that as well. So let me quickly explain what I've just done. This is one of the big reasons why a square hole for a round pool really works out as well. I left all my marks on the ground and I asked the excavator driver yesterday to not dig out my corners to where all my paint lines are. I drove rebar into all four corners, hooked the string, run from one corner, run from this corner to that corner, and made an X out here in the middle. That told me the exact center point of the square that I dug. I sprayed a little dot down, put down a stake of rebar, and then went out half the distance of the pool. The pool's 27 foot. The manual says to make it 26 foot 10 inches, but I went ahead and did 13 and a half foot out this way, wrapped a string around that rebar stake that's in the dead center, wrapped it around my spray paint can, and did my rough line to get me a 27 foot circle. The reason I went a little larger that circle is because I'm gonna lay my track down inside of that circle. That's there just for a rough reference to make sure as I set my pull up, it's centered off of my porch, which is what I want. So when we visually walk out, the pool, the deck, everything's nice dead center of the back porch here. So digging a square hole actually makes it easier for equipment with buckets on them, like a skid steer or a tractor. Excavator doesn't matter as much, but it also really just makes things quick, easy, and better for layout. We have the bottom plates for all the uprights that's gonna support my pool walls. And what snaps into these is a track that ultimately holds the wall. You can see these are already concaved and bent, although they can be manipulated some. So I'm gonna to have to go ahead and put all these down, connect them all together, build out the ring of the pool, and mark where every one of these post supports are. So there's a few different things that you can do to support your pool wall. Follow your manual because, well, ultimately you wanna stick with their warranty and be correct. But again, I've had enough friends install these types of pools. They've given me some suggestions. So what some pool manufacturers will tell you to do is to put stone dust in, basically where this line is. And it packs really tight. It's almost kind of like, well, the gravel, the dust, the concrete dust, things you put down for a road. It's not as strong as concrete or anything like that. You're not wetting it and forming it up strong, but it's a really hard compacting dust that you would put around this ring that's gonna give the wall some additional support on top of the dirt that you've already packed down. And go ahead and install this ring. Know where every post location is. There's 18 of them supporting this pool. Mark them, pull this back up, and then I bought some big like one foot by one foot, maybe they're 16 inch by 16 inch concrete pavers that I'm gonna put down here and the walls themselves are actually gonna support off of that. But I have to make for sure those pavers that I put in are flush with the top of the dirt because again, the wall is continuing to go out over the dirt as well. And this is why you wanna make sure everything's nice and packed tight. But I have been told by several people really support these posts and a concrete paver down there. They're cheap, easy to install, will really give me long-term support.
so what we did right here was put down geotextile fabric to make the uh, bottom feel a little flatter. This also keeps grass roots and rocks from coming through to the liner. And then we put a styrofoam cove around the outside edge. That'll protect the liner from getting on the track and the supports. So this is going to be hard to hear and see, but we have a vacuum taped into the side of the pool, taped up all the holes where the skimmer is, and we're pulling air out behind the liner. So I'm about to get in the pool itself, start kicking the liner out, getting the creases out. But with that vacuum hose in the wall right there, we're essentially pulling all the loose air out from behind the liner. And it's already working quickly. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is go around and start putting screws into these top caps that are on these support posts. They just snap right down in and locked. Screw those in and then we can put the top caps on and screw down into here. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and put an inch or two of water in here to hold everything down and smooth it out. I got it as good as I can get with the broom. A little bit of water will hold everything else for me. All right, so now we have a couple inches of water in the pool. The liner is still being vacuumed down. Hopefully you can hear me over the vacuum. And as the water settles in the pool too, it's stretching the liner out, pushing the air out, which is making it around again to the vacuum. So everything's actually pulling really nice. The majority of the wrinkles have vanished out of the floor. See, we still got big wrinkles like that right there. So I'll just come over to the side, kick that out. So that's what I'm gonna continue to do for a little bit while this is filling up and the water is putting pressure on the liner. See, I have some wrinkles all out here, so I'm gonna go kick from that side, stretch those out, but overall, everything looks really, really good. So this was never intended to be a how to install a pool video, because honestly, there's so much liability to that so many different rules and regulations, everything else. I just don't even want to get into it, to be honest with you. But if you watch this process, you're going to pick up on things. You're going to learn things, no doubt about that. But you need to do the deep dive into what's required for your area. Let me show you how we put these pull caps on. So the pull caps are real simple. The support snapped right down into the base that we have there. You just pinch them, snap them down into you, hear it click, and it just rests against the pull. They're really there more for, well decorative than anything else the pool wall itself being steel is kind of what's really supporting the whole structure this top cap right here snaps down and locks into this metal post it's very straightforward then this top plastic rail slides right over the top of the pool liner which hung right over the edge of the pool speaking of the pool liner there's two types you can get one called a unibead that's what i got it has a top lip that just hangs over the edge of the pool it's supposed to be a better quality liner and then they have an overlap liner one you throw over and then you have to put a plastic cap on top of that and then you put an additional plastic cap on top of that it gets complicated i've always heard the unibeads one of the best way to go it's fitting really well i'm happy i went with this what our friends use so this plastic just snaps right on top of the liner and lip i mean it's very straightforward and that's ultimately what this is sitting on top of. You see, this is all pretty loose. This piece that snapped to the top side of the pole, it's got all these different adjustment holes in there. You kind of wiggle everything around until you find a couple holes that'll line up. You go around the entire pool screwing that in. There was absolutely no screws in the bottom of mine. Everything clicked together. And then to finish it all off, you just put this top cap on right here. I mean, it's very, very straightforward. The most aggravating part, without a doubt, is you need a bunch of people to put the walls up. The other thing that I did, I don't know if y'all could pick it up with the camera and fast forward, but even with me having, what was it, five of us here, some of the pull walls want to fall in. They always wanted to fall in. They didn't want to fall out. It's just the way it worked. So I took some rebar stakes, drove into the ground, took some ratchet straps, hung one over the edge of the pool, hooked the other on the rebar, 
kind of put a little bit of tension to hold the wall up, then that person could walk away and come help me further down. Otherwise, you realistically need like eight or 10 people to put one of these walls up until you bolt it together and it doesn't want to fall in on itself. All right, well, as y'all can see, we've got thunderstorms rolling in. This is what they've been predicting. Now they have major chances of heavy rainfall for the next two days and actually starting tonight. So I'm gonna shovel some dirt up next to the pool until this lightning storm shows up right here behind me. And the rain isn't necessarily a bad thing. I'm just gonna continue to add dirt, let the rain pack and wash it in, add some more dirt, pack it with a tractor. We might cover a little bit of that in the next episode, but the rain is gonna help pack this dirt and settle it around the pool. And then, well, we can start doing our landscaping and everything else. We've got plumbing, we've got electrical, and I think we're just gonna turn this into a series like we did my big outdoor kitchen build because then right behind that is a deck. And then in between that is safety fencing and some regulations there that we'll discuss to make sure this is nice and protected and we meet our homeowner's insurance and all that good stuff. Then we move into a huge landscaping project. The list goes on and on and on. And we're actually gonna go back and do a few outdoor kitchen additions because of the pool. So we'll tie it all in this series here. I think we'll have several really good videos to make out of this. Well, I better do the last little bit of work that I can before the storm gets here. We'll catch you on the next video. It's coming soon.